guys, welcome to lesson 5 of Learn Objective C, and today we are going to be talking about memory management. Okay, so in this video we're talking about memory management. So for this Xcode project, you can download it in the link below in the description, or you can click on the annotation on the screen to download it. And this project I have created a custom class called my class. And what we're going to be doing is creating an instance of it in viewcontroller.m and then I'll show you guys some memory management details. So start by importing my class and then in here I'm going to create an instance of it. So we've done this a couple of times in previous videos, but what we didn't really talk about is memory management. So in Objective-C, there is no garbage collector if you're familiar from other uh, languages like C Sharp and stuff like that. So what is happening right here is we're actually allocating space in memory for this instance of my class. As a developer in Objective-C, we are responsible for indicating when objects are in use, when they, they're still needed, or when they, they're not needed and they're ready to be deallocated and you know have that memory freed up. So there's a system in Objective-C for indicating that and it's called a retain counter. So each instance of an object has uh, something called a retain counter and it's a simple, uh, it's just a number basically, for instance, in this object, my class instance, we just allocated and in initialized it. The retain counter for this guy is 1. And that indicates that it's still in use. Anything above 1 means it's in use. So what's important to note is that after iOS 5, there's something called ARC, or Automatic Reference Counting. And that kind of takes care of this memory management stuff for you. but Behind the scenes, this is still happening, and it's important to understand it. So that's why I'm still explaining it. Um, Pre-iOS 5, what would you have to do in this case is you'd actually have to release it. So if I allocate this um, instance of this object and I'm doing something with it in my method, at the end of the, me uh, the method, I'd actually have to go call release on it. And what that does is it decrements the retain counter of that object by 1 which would bring it to zero and what happens when the retain counter for the instance of this object reaches zero is a special method gets called on that object called dialloc and then the memory gets freed up and it's returned to the system. So in my class you won't see a dialloc method here it's actually you know a method in NS object but you what you do is you override it So what we're doing here is overriding the dialloc method. When the retain counter for that instance reaches zero, this method dialloc automatically gets called. We never call it manually. So super is referring to the parent class of, um, of my class. So we're calling our parent's dialloc method. But in here, you know, I can have any sort of custom code to release other objects that this instance may have created. So if in using my class, you know, I've created a whole bunch of other objects and allocated and initialized other things in my dialog method, I'd want to clean up all of that stuff. And if we don't do that properly, then our app is going to have memory leaks and possibly lead to app crashes. Going back to view controller, uh, if we manually wanted to increment the uh, retain counter on an instance we would use the retain so this alloc init paradigm will automatically uh, increment it by one that's why even without this retain uh, my class instance would have a retain counter of one and then me calling release at the end of it would bring it down to zero so let's give you some examples of things that can go wrong in managing your own memory so for example, if I were to call release on 
this reference variable here, what would happen is it would bring the retain counter for my class instance down to zero, and then dialloc would get called on that instance, and that memory that that object was taken up would get released. So if I try to uh, access that instance of the object here by, let's say, calling a method of it or trying to do something with it, your app would crash. Now, for example, here's let me give you another example. If I have another variable, uh, call it second reference, and I point it to my class instance, if I release it here, keep in mind that the retain count is still one, and then when I release it here, the retain count of my class instance would be zero. And then if I tried to do something with second reference, like call a method of it or something like that, it would be pointing to you know something that doesn't exist anymore. Now what I'd actually have to do is assign it that. So I'm incrementing by calling retain, I'm incrementing the retain counter on that instance. So now it sits at two. And when I call release on it, I'm decrementing it back to one. And then uh, I would be able to use second reference and call a method or do whatever with it. And then at the end of the method, I would have to call release on it to decrement it down to zero so that it gets cleaned up. If I don't have this statement here, then I would have a memory leak. So now you guys know how Objective-C handles memory management. So with the introduction of iOS 5 and automatic reference counting, otherwise known as ARC, you don't have to write those retain and release statements anymore. So we're going to talk about that in the next episode. Now for your fact of the day. Did you know that the first iPhone was launched on June 29th of 2007? That's about five years ago, six years ago actually. And they've come up with, well, iPhone 2, iPhone 3, 3GS, 4, 4S, 5. That's six iPhone. That's once, once a year. So do you guys have any thoughts and comments on that? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll talk to you guys next time.